All right, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from sunny San Diego. And today, I'm delighted to be joined by Ashley Klein, who is just up the coast in the home of surfing in Huntington Beach. Right, Ashley? Yes, yes. And Ashley is a digital marketing consultant and freelancing expert with more than 15 years experience in in the digital marketing space. Uh, She specializes in building strategic marketing plans, uh, mapping at execution and collaborating to optimize tactics that drive increased performance for clients. Uh, She's also EVP of Client Strategy at Ticket Socket and vice president and co-founder of Ice Cream Social. And you clearly have no spare time. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> just exhausted reading all your different jobs yeah. um, and what we're going to talk about today is how to properly utilize events and networking for your marketing of, um, efforts and how the import- importance of word of mouth marketing in today's digital world I love this uh, I, I love this subject because we've become so digitally obsessed if you like it's uh, it's great so tell me um, why do you think people are overlooking the the word of mouth, the networking, the events, um, and, and kind of trying to focus almost ex- some people almost exclusively on the digital? What are they missing out on? Yeah, uh, well, I'd have to say I think people focus there because it's it's uncomfortable sometimes to do in person networking and put mm-hmm. yourself out there and talk about yourself and give your elevator pitch, and I think it can be pretty nerve wracking for a lot of people. And we find comfort behind our screens where we don't have to show our face or talk to anybody. And we can, you know, spend time really keeping things, you know, buttoned up and polished and, you know, putting that appearance forward that we want to be out there. And when you're in person, you know, you've got to be a little more flexible. You're interacting with other humans and you've got to be more open. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I was actually at a conference uh, the other week in in Vegas, and uh, it is interesting. A lot of people go to conferences and they're very excited to go, and they see all you know it's going to be a great opportunity. But when they get there, they're just not quite sure how to network because you know, there's people milling around, there's uh, breakouts going on, keynotes and whatever the exhibit hall, and and some t- I think I think a lot of people have kind of lost that art of networking because we have become so uh, digitally, um, you know, so reliant on digital. Yes, I would say for myself personally, one, I always love a networking event in Vegas, but <laughs> two, if it's on a large scale like that, where there's exhibit halls and, um, you know, different tracks and there's a lot going on, it's big, overwhelming, that can be pretty easy to hide as well. Cause there's so many people and you kind of don't know what to do. You just show up to, uh, the different sessions, you might walk around the booths. So when I go to those events to assure I don't sit in my little crab shell, Hmm. I set a goal and I will say, okay, in order for this event to be worth my time, because I'm here, I am investing time and probably money to be here. I'm going to set a goal for myself and I need to make sure that I walk away with maybe three solid leads for my business or whatever my goal or objective is for being there. Maybe I'm looking for new partnerships. So I will set that goal and that will force me, you know, to get out there and just talk and keep introducing myself to people because you're going to have to talk to more to three people to, you know, reach that goal. And so I'd say that's kind of my game plan for those larger events. Now, Uh, If you are newer to networking or more uncomfortable, you actually might find more comfort in smaller networking events. When I first started my career, I would say for the first two years, and I was just starting out in business too, so it was a great way to feed myself and get breakfast and lunch and dinner (laughs) at a good cost when you're, you know, working in sales, building your network, growing your business. I joined my local chamber of commerce. And they usually have a lot of networking events. They'll usually have like a a breakfast event where everyone has to go around and say what they do and get to know each other. Same with lunch and dinners. And then I also joined uh, a group called BNI, Business Network International. There's a lot of other companies that also do networking. Mm -hmm. 
like BNI, but essentially it is a group of people that meet once a week, every week, same time, same people. You can bring new people in and no one's allowed to be in the group that competes with what you do in business. Sure. So everyone, you know, it's a safe place. You can pass referrals and every week you practice with each other, just giving your elevator pitch and asking for what kind of referrals you're looking for. And when you're out there working, everyone's kind of working together. It's like building your own little um, sales team of, of people in other industries, talking to other people that can help keep an eye out for you. Yeah, I think that's a I think it's a great piece of advice because it's it's a low risk if you like in many ways it's low risk networking good place to get started good place to get used to it um, so that you practice later on when you're maybe being a little more targeted maybe going to a little bigger ones you'll you'll yeah. at least have have got that got that comfort comfort level um, so. Do, do, maybe give people examples of other types of networking events and that, because people tend to think, yeah, there's a chamber of commerce and then there's like these huge events, but there's so many other things in there. And especially like Eventbrite now kind of has constant networking events coming up. LinkedIn is constant networking events being advertised. Definitely. I would say a good Google search, a good search on those platforms like LinkedIn or Meetup, or uh, there's a lot of tools that I use as a marketer, you know, attentive, active campaign, and they also hold little meetups, mm -hmm. WordPress. So seek out things in your industry. And uh, my suggestion for these events, because they're not intimate, but they're also not large, mm -hmm. but there's usually a good, you know, maybe 50 to 100 people there. So this is my secret hack for those type of events. What I do is I stand at the front door. I get there right on time or early and I stand at the front door and that way every single person coming in they see me first they introduce themselves to me because I'm standing there and they don't know anybody yet they almost think that I work there but then I have hand them my card and they realize that I don't but then what happens is you've immediately because you have to think everyone walking into that room is also a little intimidated sure. so what happens is Great. You spend the first 15 minutes at the door. You meet most of the people that come through. So that's a win. You meet most of the people. Two, as the event goes on throughout the evening and people are, you know, just chatting in little groups here and there, uh, there's going to be people who find themselves uncomfortable, like, oh, I don't want to interrupt this conversation or I don't know who to talk to. And they're going to remember you from when they first got there because. Uh, you were the one of the first touch points. You made them feel comfortable. So people are going to be seeking you out to strike up conversation, uh, which can be a really great hack if you're kind of nervous in that little setting. Yeah, that's a great piece of advice. Actually, that's a, I'm, I'm going to use that one. Um, <laughs> I like no, I, I, it's a really and it, and it's a really simple one too. And you're correct is that is that we you know just human nature we always assume that you know maybe we're the ones who are feeling you know, a little bit shy and all of that. And everybody, every look around and we think, oh, everybody else looks like they're super confident and everything. No. But I mean, most people are the exact same as us, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, so um, so that, that was one fantastic hack. You know, what are some other pieces of advice that you would give to people about when you engage with other people? Like, what is a good way of engaging? Because especially if you go to networking events or conferences and, you know, there's people who will hand you their card and then you say, oh, a company, and they'll launch into their, you know, sales pitch immediately. And sometimes, you know, you sometimes it's a little off-putting when somebody just goes straight into it, you know, without any any kind of buildup. What, what do you advise in, in how to start conversations? Sure. So I agree. It can be a little off-putting when people go straight into an elevator pitch. However, I try to take the mindset of, okay, we're all a little bit uncomfortable here. Mm. We're all probably some of us are new to networking. And that's, you know, what people think they're supposed to do. So I kind of give them that benefit of the doubt and, you know, just hear them out and make them feel comfortable. Uh, secondly, is just ask questions. Um, mm. Ask and it's okay to not be about business. If you don't understand anything that they do in business, you can still just ask questions like, you know, what do they like to do for fun? Do they like to go hiking, you know, get to know their hobbies and that sort of thing uh, as well so that you get to know them as a person and not just business. And oftentimes I find that 
once you establish that personal connection of, oh, we both like this kind of music or we both love going to the beach, uh, then you're more likely to remember that connection that you made and you're more likely to follow up and something will come of that, you know, whether it's a great friendship or business or referrals or whatever the case may be, um, establish that personal connection. And then after the events, be sure to follow up with them, you know, add them on LinkedIn, send them an email, maybe reach out and schedule, you know, a coffee date and, you know, continue to learn more about what each other does. And I think one of the other things, and I think we're all guilty of this sometimes, is like forgetting to smile and forgetting to look like open <laughs> to engagement, you, especially if you're at a, maybe an event, maybe if you're the second day of a big conference or whatever, yeah. you're a bit tired or whatever. Sometimes you actually have to remind yourself, what do I look like right now? Do, yeah. I, am I, do I look like I'm hungover and I don't want to talk to anybody? Yeah. Or yeah. do I look like I'm, I'm open and engaging? It, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so what are some of the other thing? Because here's another thing that I often do, like, and I think this is is a good thing, at, at, particularly if you're at bigger conferences and ex exhibit halls, and that is quickly when you engage with people at their booths, is quickly establish whether you whether there's any synergy between the two of you, because there's nothing worse than wasting somebody's time at a booth, wasting your time when you both have this lovely conversation, but you know that there's nothing. There's nothing going to come of it because you're not the right fit. Um, I always find that if you if you really get down to it and and very quickly, if you go, yeah, this is probably not a good fit for me, so I'm not going to take up any more of your time because you have other people. People really kind of respect that. I totally agree. And when I'm you know working an event where we have a booth for Ticket Socket or Ice Cream mm -hmm. Social, I kind of, I try not to attack everyone as they're walking by and like reel them in and say, listen to this. Mm -hmm. I try to give them a minute because I see that they're taking in our booth and what we do. So one, if you have a booth, make it very obvious within seconds, someone walking by, they know exactly what you do uh, because then they can keep walking by if it's mm -hmm. just not a good fit. Um, but I give them a second, let them take it in see if they have any questions and want to learn more, but I kind of take that no pressure approach. If somebody is generally, genuinely really interested, they will start asking the right questions. Uh, so yeah. I kind of feel it out that way. And I think that's the, and I think that is the key probably to networking anyway, is that asking questions and, and, you know, and establishing, as I said, you may establish that, the person you're talking to, whether in at a small event, big event, or whatever, that there's there doesn't appear to be any synergy between you. But at the same time, if they remember you, they may remember you for later. They may say to one of their colleagues later, "Oh, actually, you should talk to you should you you know you should talk to this person." Um, but it's all about if you ask questions and you seem curious. I think that's the biggest thing is where you seem curious about what the other people do. Absolutely. Always ask questions. That's the best way to kind of steer a conversation or awkward silence. It's just ask questions about them to get to know them. Mm -hmm. And do you see, where do you see this going right now? Because I mean, there was all these virtual events and everybody was doing virtual events and now kind of in-person events are coming back small, medium, large. Um, what do you, where do you see the future? Do you see this in-person networking to really be so, kind of back to the future, like go back to basics because it works. Because I feel sometimes we throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yes. I, you know, during COVID, of course, I experimented sure. in all kinds of online networking events and it's great for sure. But what I found was I had, you know, a certain group of people we were meeting on the regular. We only knew each other virtually, but we felt like we all knew each other mm -hmm. really well. Then we all met up in person. And that just really changed the dynamic because one, it almost creates like a, a certain level of accountability then. Like I've met these people face to face. I've said that I want to introduce them to this company. Like now I really got to do it. I'm not hiding behind a computer anymore. Um, and you just, you get to know people better when it's in person. Honestly, it, it, even, you know, when we're recording podcasts, I'm sure you see it. There's always like that weird hesitation because there's a leg and people are talking, you don't want to cut people off. But when you're in person, it just feels more natural. 
Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. I mean, it's definitely there, there's, there's a skill set to both. Uh, so, do you have any other any other networking hacks that you can share with our audience? Oh, hacks! I'm not sure. I do, I do think that there is uh, a place in person. Definitely encourage everyone to do it. If you're another great group to check out, if public speaking networking totally scares you. Uh, there's a group called Toastmasters, mm-hmm. it's kind of similar to BNI, where you meet weekly, but uh, you're kind of practicing public speaking as well. Uh, groups like that, um, I would say, you know, depending on your business too, there are a lot of um, great ways to network online. So you just got to seek them out and try them. Um, one thing that my goal for 2023 hold me to it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was encouraged by uh, some speaking coaches that I was working with uh, in an accelerator. And they encouraged me to join. Um, what is it called? Oh, improv, like improv. Improv. Oh, okay. Yeah, because learning, uh, just going to improv classes helps you learn to speak on your feet more and, you know, have that more natural dynamic and communication. You know that's a fantastic idea. I I I think that's a I think that's a fantastic idea for people um, to take on board. I, also, Toastmasters. I think that's a great, yeah. a great one as well. Because, uh, you know, let's face it. More and more, we all everybody needs to be able to speak in some you know um, capacity or not. And certainly, taking away the fear of speaking to group, whether it's I mean, sometimes speaking to a small group is more um, intimidating than speaking to a large group. So, I mean, things like Toastmasters can be really, really, really helpful for that. And I love the idea of of improv because improv always kind of puts you out of your comfort zone, makes you have to think on your feet, makes you have to kind of riff off other people. So it's a it, 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 that that's a great great piece of advice. Um. So how so how has the improv helped you? Well, I haven't done it oh, yet. Done it? Yeah. Oh, this is what yeah, you're doing this, this year. Yeah. Well, I'm going to join classes this year and yeah. give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, but it what makes did, sense to me. What did Toastmasters do for you? Well, I didn't do Toastmasters, okay. but I had friends do Toastmasters mm-hmm. because I've just always been comfortable with public. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say you didn't sound you didn't sound like somebody who needs too much help in that yeah. area. <laughs> but I have I have gone to like a, a friend's class and, or not class, but like meeting and checked it out, and I thought it was a really great concept for sure. If you're un- yeah. totally uncomfortable with public speaking, yeah, and it's a very it's a very safe and supportive environment, and I think that's the thing that uh, that most people it's probably there's probably fear of going in the first place, but Toastmasters is always very um, very supportive and, and a very and a very safe very safe place. Um, and just, and just in, in the last couple of moments, online networking, have you any ad- advice for that? Absolutely. So um, there's kind of two realms of it, online networking and, you know, word of mouth mar- marketing. Uh, so that's where we have ice cream social that just helps you basically turn your customers and the influencers for you to do that word of mouth marketing. And then the networking side of things, uh, you know, it's really, Find the place that you're comfortable to network, whatever social network that is. Maybe it's LinkedIn, maybe it's TikTok, maybe it's Instagram, and just focus on one platform, build your presence. You know, LinkedIn is probably great if you're Mm -hmm. focused on business um, because it's a little less stressful atmosphere. Um, And make sure that you just schedule time each week to regularly engage with people, leave comments on their, you know, exciting news, their updates, and also make sure that you're regularly updating and sharing what's going on in your career and business. Yeah, absolutely. The only thing I would add to that is if you are going to comment, uh, make sure you've read what the person actually posted. Yeah. Because there's not, for me, like there's nothing worse that you, know, you post something and then somebody goes, oh yeah, great post. And I know immediately he never read it. Yeah, I highly suggest not to use the pre-prompted copy that is written for you to just push. Uh, Definitely take a moment to be genuine and just carve out 20 minutes and and make it simple. Yeah, read it and make make an observation based on the content because there is nothing more... Uh, there's nothing. There's nothing that people appreciate more than if they think, "Oh, you read it, and you actually are asking me something about it, or making a comment. You're enriching it. That's fantastic." But great post doesn't do that. Absolutely. <laughs> I would say 
the secret is to be consistent, you know, yeah. just keep showing up every week. And even if it's for 10 minutes, just be consistent. And over time, you'll see that compound effect. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, Ashley, this has been great. All of Ashley's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Ashley, please do tell people a little bit more about you and uh, your various companies. Sure. So you can find out more about TicketSocket at TicketSocket.com. We're a white labeled ticketing software. We power a lot of events, your fun runs, your Spartan races, circuses, museums. Uh, and there, my whole goal is to help our clients sell as many tickets as possible. Uh, and we also have Ice Cream Social. And Ice Cream Social is a so social referral widget that uh, can be bolted on to any checkout flow and essentially gamify for your customers, inviting more customers to your business. Well, well, fantastic. Well, I would encourage you, as I said, all the information will be below, but I encourage you to go, go check them out. And uh, if I ever launch my circus, I'll be. Hey. Yeah, we're <laughs> <for> <laughs> all right. Well, listen, thanks again, Ashley. And thank you all for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again very soon. Yeah.